Ken Hendrickson here with a follow-up video to my first one where I showed how to fix the memory issue with the M1 Max when trying to start up WSJTX. Done a little exploring, did a little straining back in my memory a few years, many years in fact, and remembered that the Apple computer Max have a, pro a programming language called AppleScript. So I have written a little Apple script that's going to solve the problem of this memory error which keeps propping up. With Apple script you can actually just go in and write a few lines of very simple code and then uh, run it. And you can in fact convert that code to an application form so that you can run it as if it were an application. And here on the screen I'm showing you some of that original video and what you had to do to get your M1 Mac to run WSJTX was of course to copy and paste two lines of code into the terminal, type your password in after the first line of code, and then from there you were uh, ready to start running WSJTX. With my new solution you will be able to start up your Mac and it will be ready to run WSJTX using my little Apple script which will be found in the show notes below and all you'll have to do is copy and paste it as I demonstrate in the video and you'll be ready to go. In case I forget to mention the first time you run my little script or start up your computer actually it will ask you if you really want to run ter terminal and uh, you just say yes and from then on it will work. So we're going to go off to applications using Finder and you're going to go down and find the folder that's called utilities and open that and we're going to open a program called script editor and script editor is where the pro where you're going to actually write your uh, file. You can note, see that I've already created the file but instead of opening it here I'm going to go as if I were creating a new file or a new document because that's what you'll do. You'll choose to do a new document. Uh, you will then go down in my show notes and you will copy this text. Notice that it says your password. Do script your password Make sure you change your password to whatever your password is when you log into the Mac. That will be the only difference between this and the code that's in the show notes. And as I'm demonstrating here, you're going to delete your password and you're going to type in whatever your password happens to be. And then you're going to save it. When you save it, make sure that you change the name to something that you will remember because after you save it the first you're going to save it and then you're going to export it and if you want to see if it works or not you can actually run it under um, under here uh, forgotten <laughs> okay so here it is it's run And that's what it does. It runs those two lines of code. So we know that it works. You do it under script. You just go down and choose run. Now I'm going to rename the script or actually I'm going to give it a name. Give it a name like I said that will make sense to you. And I just called it the M1 or the Mac M1 fix. Uh, I'm not actually going to save it because I've already done that and you'll see if you happen to choose save I'm, I'm going to cancel out of that uh, and I'm going to go up though and you're going to go to edit I'm sorry file and you're going to go down to export and you're instead of exporting it as a script which is what happened when you saved it when you export it what you want to do is change it to an application and all you want the application to do is run so first change the name Again, can be the same name that you had before or something else, but this is the application name. This is the application that when your Mac starts up, this application is going to run. 
and it's going to run every time that you uh, start your Mac up automatically. So in this case, I saved it on the desktop. <laughs> wanted to make it simple because you only have to go through this process once and then you can uh, delete it off of your desktop. So save it on your desktop. And you can see it pop up there on my desktop. And that's all we need the Apple Script for, so we can close app, the Apple Script application. And I'm going to cancel it. You could do another save. And next, we're going to go uh, down to the bottom, and we're going to go into the System Preferences, and we're going to go to Users and Groups. I'm going to open that up. And you'll notice that it's locked. Well, we want to unlock it, so click on the lock, and it'll ask for your password. Again, this is the password you use when you uh, log in. After you type in your password, you're going to go up to Login Items. You'll notice I already have Mac M1 Fix done because I had to test it to make sure it worked. Uh, originally, I saved it in Applications, and I would suggest you do the same thing. But for the purposes of this video, I saved it on the desktop. So just go to wherever you saved it on your computer. As I said, I suggest you save it under Applications, but I saved it on the desktop. And after you find it, uh, highlight it, and then click that blue Add button in the lower right-hand corner, and it will be added to your uh, startup screen. So that's all there is to it, and it'll keep doing it from now on. Make sure you lock it so it doesn't get changed. Uh, and that's, that's the way it works. So what you have to do is reboot your computer just to make sure it's working. When you reboot it, the first time, as I said, it will ask you if you want Terminal to run and just say OK. And then Terminal will show up with that little dot under it, which means it ran. And you can see here that it did work, uh, and that uh, the two lines of codes were executed. And uh, you can, if you want, to run, open up that file from the other video that I showed, and you can run one line of text, which will check to make sure that all the memory settings have been changed. And uh, that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, uh, think about giving it a thumbs up, please. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified, uh, you might want to subscribe. In the meantime, this is Ken W6BZY, hoping that this uh, little permanent solution will keep us running. And maybe someday in the future, somebody will fix the M1, but we don't need it now. 73s.